good evening, everyone. So uh, we're live on 30 minutes on ID Med Health, and um, this evening I have with me uh, Dr. Jaffe Tosuji. Dr. Sa Jaffe Tosuji is uh, our very strong resource person, our guest that would be doing so much of uh, justice to the topic at hand. Uh, I also have in here with me our boss at the uh, CEO at uh, ID Med Health, uh, Chibese. He's also here with us. So uh, we're going to uh, we, we trust that this evening we are going to learn so much uh, from our very own Dr. Jaffet. Dr. Jaffet, good evening. How are you doing? I'm very sorry for the delay that we experienced. So how are you doing today? Or how has it been? I'm doing sorry. Um, very, very well. Thank you for having thank me. You. All right. Thank you, Dr. Jaffet, for coming around. All right. And also, no uh, thank you very much. Yeah. So thank you, because, Mr. Vivi, thank you. Yeah, so because we've uh, spent uh, kind of a, a bit of time trying to put stuff in order, we'll just uh, kick off almost immediately. So, um, but then uh, before I, I just start my questions, because we we'll just have a, a, like a maximum of 30 minutes here, because this is actually 30 minutes on ID mental mm -hmm. health. So before I ask, I start, we start uh, looking into what we have to be. Uh, when I was small, I heard that there is there are there there is a kind of cough that uh, uh, when you cough, you spill blood, right? Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. in my head, cough and spill blood. That's serious. That's something serious. Uh -huh. Then again. In our Igbo uh, language, they said they, they call the cough okwarada. I know that the okwara that I know, okwara means cough, unsa means small. I know that the okwara that I know uh, is is not uh, a serious thing because you don't cough out blood. How come the cough that you now cough out blood is now called okwaranta, the small cough? So that always uh, brings a kind of confusion to me because I, I, for me, the name should be Dick Cough, but then English calls it tuberculosis. And uh, it's been uh, a serious, I think, uh, uh, like the third major killer after HIV and AIDS and uh, COVID-19, as from what I saw. And that means it's, it's an issue of concern. Dr. Jeff, what do you think? It's an issue of concern. Absolutely. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I think tuberculosis is really of concern. Now, I can't go into the evil <laughs> explanations as deep as, <laughs> as deep as you have gone into it. But uh -huh. definitely, uh -huh. definitely, for sure, for sure, <laughs> for sure it's, it's something that's worth talking about because it's very serious. As a general rule, whenever we see something that it begins to talk about, say someone coughing out blood, then we know that definitely it's serious. It's an alarm sign, so to speak. So definitely, I, I think it's something that everybody needs to be aware of so that we can uh, be, you know, they said to be forewarned, to be forearmed. So when you're yeah. clearly aware of the symptoms, you're clearly aware of how serious something is, then we can actually take proper, uh, well, make a proper defense against mm. this kind of diseases that are very serious to everybody. Or of uh, public health concern. Hmm. Yeah. So that then, uh, because we call it cough, and then mm -hmm. if you call it cough, it could have been making a very like it would have meant something mad because cough to everybody uh, uh, gets cough or everybody suffers suffers from cough, you know. But then, if it's not really really cough, like it is known, uh, like. Yes, it is cough, but then not the cough. You no, know. are there symptoms one would have to see to say, okay, this is a cough different from the cough? You no, know. so are there really symptoms of uh, this? Uh, okay, so yeah, maybe we can hear some of them. Yes, yeah, thank you for making uh, bringing up that question. I think primarily it's important to know that uh, tuberculosis, as you know, it is a disease that's caused by, just by way of introduction, really, 
that is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So that's the bacteria. And however, you know, we kind of limit it to, okay, that means it's caused, it's caused. Yes. So it's not limited to the lungs alone. However, that's where it usually affects. So it usually affects the lungs, but it's not limited to the lungs alone. So but to directly answer the question of what you were talking about, so when we talk of the cough, it has to be a chronic kind of cough. Chronic in the sense that it has lasted more than three weeks. So you know those kind of cough that, okay, you, if someone is coughing, coughing, I mean, like, we've all seen it growing up, where someone starts coughing, and I say, ah, oh boy, who's going to be TB, you won't give me. That kind, of <laughs> that kind of reaction. Because when a cough lasts for too long, more than three weeks, in medicine it's known as a chronic cough. Well, some some people say more than two weeks, some people say more than three weeks. But generally speaking, a cough that is prolonged, uh, usually, maybe the person has even taken some treatments, like even, uh, uh, some, some people just jumped to antibiotics. Some people also start taking a uh, cough syrup. But we see that maybe this cough doesn't quite, it, 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 it's prolonged. It stays more than two weeks, more than three weeks. Then that's a chronic kind of cough. Now, yeah. for tuberculosis, it may or may not be blood tangent. That means it may have blood in it. Or sometimes it may not have, but usually another characteristic, because we want to see a cough that is productive, that has some, uh, so you produce something when you cough. And then sometimes that sputum can be blood stained. It's another warning sign that, okay, this might be something more serious than I thought it is. Sometimes it might also be accompanied as associated with chest pain. It's another additional symptom that, okay, uh, this might be something, this might be a, a more serious cough than I thought it was. It might also be associated with unintended weight loss. So it's not like you are on a diet. It's not like you are actively exercising, but you're losing weight. So yeah. some people can know that if someone looks at you, oh, you're, you're really losing weight. Or even your clothes or your accessories, like your ring, they begin to be loose, loose on, on you or more loose on you. So it's a sign that, okay, there's unintended weight loss. Hmm. Subsequently, too, there might also be night sweat. Now, I, I say that even, when I say night sweat, I'm even really referring to the way the book puts it, it says drenching night sweat. So we can have drenching night sweat, where the person even wakes up and then the bed is all soaked and he has to change the bed sheet. So that's another symptom that all these clusters of symptoms or clusters of symptoms come together to really form what we know as a tuberculosis, amongst other symptoms. All right, thank you, Dan. I'd love to because really uh, the the bane of tuberculosis is that in some areas of the world or some regions of the world, it's mm. endemic in those regions. So what it means is that the bacteria in those regions, the same way we can say Nigeria is an endemic region for malaria, in the same way we can, we can really say that some areas of the world, some regions of the world are endemic regions for tuberculosis. So when we talk about areas or regions like uh, Eastern Europe, Africa, Amongst, uh, to mention but a few, those areas are areas where there's a high, uh, so to speak, concentration of this bacteria in those areas. So yeah. in that sense, there are people who have what we call a latent phase, or if you would, a dormant phase of the bacteria. So yeah, mm. yes, they, are, they have been infected with bacteria, but the, as you've, the, the, the word you just used, sleeping, the, the, the bacteria is just literally sleeping or resting in their body. And the reason it's been, is that it's been walled off by their strong immune system. So in people who have very good immune system or whose immune system is not compromised, as we would see in people with HIV patients or uh, people with chronic illnesses like diabetes mellitus or people who are taking chemotherapy or for whatever reason, maybe the, the very extreme of ages, the very young or the very old, 
people whose immune system is still very much, very, very much functional, we will not see any disease, active disease in this person yet. Many times it's just a latent phase of the disease, like your friend rightly said, yes. So when we test them, maybe we'll do a skin test. Uh, uh, skin test is where maybe we'll just give, uh, uh, we'll just do a skin test on the, the, this particular person who we say has a latent phase. It will be positive, but when you do a chest x-ray, you will see a very clear chest x-ray because there's no symptom. There's no, the, the disease is just in a sleeping stage, so to speak, and not actually doing any harm to the person yet. Okay. So that means that actually... Yeah, so there are people who... Yeah. Okay, that means there are some of us in Nigeria that might have this in our body, but because we've not tested, we might not know, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yes, yeah. and there are people who will live their normal lives and die of natural causes with latent no. phase of TB in them. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay, but then not everybody that has it. You just need to be in the endemic area for you to be as strict as they. Well, there are a number of things that put the person at risk. So, but yes, I would say, to answer your question, I would say the person is in a more, the risk are increased for a person in an endemic area, yes. Okay, yeah, so uh, uh, yes, I guess it's, are you looking? You, okay. Yeah, from, from your explanation, uh, you know, uh, the later I know, uh, tuberculosis is one of the leading causes of, you know, death in AIDS patients. Yeah. Okay. Do, does it really mean that uh, it's, it's more like an opportunistic uh disease or infection so uh, because it's from your explanation when mm -hmm. the immune system is, uh, is compromised okay mm -hmm. tuberculosis has its effect on the person yes yeah. okay but a normal person without any immune related disease the latent stage of tuberculosis can stay as long as the person lives without, you know, showing the symptoms. Hope that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you very much. I, I just want to, you know, get the right clarification. And I, I think I, I like the word that you use, opportunistic, because that really is what it is in the, in the long run. So when it sees an opportunity, opportunity, a, a break or a chink in your armor, which, so to speak, is the defense system of the human body, defense mechanism of the human body, when it sees that space to come in, it definitely will take it, as we see in HIV or AIDS patients. So it's important to know that, in fact, that's the relationship between HIV and tuberculosis, that when we see somebody presenting with active TB disease in a hospital setting, or in any setting for that matter, a, a health worker will start thinking that, okay, so... I need to screen this person for HIV automatically. I need to screen this person for this, screen this person for that, because that alone is now telling me that this person might be immunocompromised or immunosuppressed for whatever reason. So that's a close relationship between the two of them. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, so I, I also, I, I, I noticed that uh, that uh, people who uh, most especially doctors when they want to talk about uh, they use a word in particular. Sometimes you hear them say uh, tuberculosis. Sometimes people say tuberculosis disease. Are, are these two diseases, are these two things the same or they are different or what uh, they say about it? Uh, Dr. Okay, please, can you take the question again? I barely got. I, I, I think I, I lost some of the things you said. Okay, can you hear me now? Is the voice yeah. better now? Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, uh, you can use the one Rather than clear. I don't even know what you're I said loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I got it. I got it. So, uh, so from what uh -huh. I, I, I said, I do hear some doctors or some health workers, sometimes they say things like tuberculosis, and sometimes they say something like tuberculosis disease. Are these two things the same or two different terminologies? Okay. So that we can be 
if I if I got you correctly, yeah. you're trying to tell me that okay, somebody uses TB infection and tuberculosis disease. Is that what you said? To so just cause tuberculosis. tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis can exist as an infection stage. So that what that means is that the person has been exposed and at that point has been infected with the uh, tuberculosis uh, bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis. But when we talk about tuberculosis disease, it's an active stage of the disease. What it means is that the person is already manifesting symptoms of this disease. If we do an x-ray for the person, usually we would already see uh, well manifestations of tuberculosis in the lungs, for instance, or other symptoms of, of uh, tuberculosis. So that's what we call tuberculosis as a disease. On top of tuberculosis, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's already in its active phase. It's a broad term. However, these specifics are very important in clinic. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Chibeli, do you have any more questions from your end? Um, you know, I, I, I would say I'm an advocate for, you know, preventive health. Okay? And I wouldn't come oh, to yes. a discussion, I wouldn't come to a discussion like this, you know, without uh, asking or trying to understand ways this tuberculosis can be, you know, prevented. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a wonderful question because literally a lot of medical or healthcare professionals and even public health professionals are beginning to emphasize more and more that preventive medicine is the future. And so if we can prevent, like you, you're almost quoting that uh, prevention is better than cure. It's not overlooked, but I think it's uh, maybe over underemphasized sometimes. It's what we're doing right now. So just the awareness or creating the, on a more personal level, honestly, I think one of the things we can do to prevent uh, is to, which has already been done on a national level. I think when I checked, somewhere since 1920 something, Nigeria has been administering, administering vaccines. So when a child is born, one of the first things that is given, at best, the child is given a, va a vaccine known as a BCG or Bacillus calmet wearing vaccine. That vaccine is actually against, uh, given against, against, tuberculosis, and it has gone a long, long way to reduce the uh, incidences of tuberculosis in Nigeria. However, that's not the only thing we can do. Now, to carefully identify how we can prevent this, we need to check, we need to also look at how it is spread. So we know that okay. it is spread in overcrowded, poorly ventilated areas, like in prisons, like uh, maybe in the nursing homes or place, places where old people uh, are kept or clustered together. We also know that it is high in people who work in laboratories or labs. We also know that it is high in health workers, healthcare workers who work with people who are infected with uh, tuberculosis. So one of the things I would carefully say aside being va vaccinated will be to have proper oral hygiene. If we work in close proximity with people who are infected, then we need to also properly get the proper protective equipment, uh, what we call PPE to properly protect ourselves against the disease. Uh, for people who have been exposed or are at risk, they need to do, yeah, like you mentioned, early testing, early, de early detection will go a long way in also curbing the spread of uh, tuberculosis. Now, prompt treatment. So for people who are infected, maybe at the latent phase, or even at the disease phase, we must make sure that they are adequately treated. Then we need to begin to say, okay, you have to get yourself checked. And then we have to also limit exposure to that person. Now, those are all to mention, but a few of the preventive measures that I that I can get off the top of my head right now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jeff. So well, I have two more questions right now. So the first question, uh, so it's just so that you can start working together because we have like five minutes. To all right. So all right. The first question is: so this medication is we're talking about. I guess I. So in medicine that almost every drug, in fact, there's a way we used to put it then, we still put it by the way that every medication is a potential poison, and that's true. Uh, oh, however, okay. with every medication, now when I put it that way, there's already things, okay, that means don't need to take medications again. And that's not true really, because at, at every point in time, we're always weighing the benefit versus the uh, risk, or the advantage versus the disadvantage, if you would. So very important is that, yes, there are side effects to the drug. And I'm very sure that whoever is going to be placing you 
who whoever is going to be your primary care provider, not yours, because I'm, you don't have. So, I, so you get my point. Whoever is going to be, <laughs> whoever is going to be administering the drug to a patient, yeah. Whoever is going to administer the drugs to a patient is definitely definitely bound to tell the person the exact side effects to expect. Uh, of which one of the very common ones is that, uh, so, uh, of course, the, the, the nausea, vomiting. Sometimes we might have skin rashes. There might be stomach upset. There might be itchy skin. Uh, there mm. might also, yeah, there might be jaundice, discoloration of the eyes and uh, skin. There might be colored urine. So I think this one is one is the one that made most case with this, this movie that, and it's, 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 closed, it's closely linked with one of the drugs known as rifampicin. Another very important one is uh, uh, neuropathy or neuritis. If some people begin to get begin to get uh, color color blindness or color vision, distortion of their vision. But all of this, the person will be appropriately counselled beforehand. And there are some drugs that we also give, not because the drug is going to fight the tuberculosis, but because it's going to help ease out the side effects. For instance, when people are given, when doctor is going to prescribe isoniazide which is one of the anti-tubercular anti drugs, the person is also going to, hand in hand, already prescribe uh, vitamin, vitamin B6 because it helps to prevent the whole uh, peripheral neuritis that comes with it. So this is your second question about pregnancy, uh, about tuberculosis in pregnancy. Yes, it's very important because, again, these are high-risk groups because tuberculosis can uh, be disadvantageous both to the mother and the baby. In the sense that, that, first of all, pregnancy is also a situation where the immune, the immunity of the mother is going to also uh, be a little bit depressed, different from her pre-pregnant stage or state. So it's also important that we appropriately uh, take care for pregnant women. So yes, there are, there are things that they need to also observe to shield herself, both herself and her unborn baby from being infected. Now, rarely, occasionally, TB can also be passed to the child, but that's not the case usually. Except if the mother becomes immunocompromised or immunosuppressed along the line, more than she already is, then it can become even a, a state where the mother would have to be treated appropriately even while being pregnant. Because again, like I said earlier, all the time in, 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 in medical practice or in the clinics, we're always trying to weigh advantage versus disadvantage. We're always trying to weigh the benefits of a treatment with the risk of that treatment. So if it comes to the fact that, of course, we wouldn't want to expose the child to certain treatments or certain drugs. In fact, as a matter of fact, there are some anti tubercular drugs that are uh, totally contraindicated in pregnancy. For instance, uh, we also use streptomycin, which is an antibiotic for, as a second-line treatment for tuberculosis. But in a pregnant woman, you don't want to withhold that because it's highly disadvantageous to the baby, that particular brand of antibiotic. But we can always use the first line if the need becomes absolutely clear that this woman needs to be treated now, then definitely there's a place for tuberculosis treatment in pregnancy. Mm, all right. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, You're been, welcome. Uh, uh, do you think there will be a final word to hear that people who will get a small hold of the Okay, so I, I believe that we are having this program today in commemoration of the World Tuberculosis Day. So a word on that would be that, yes, it is wise. It's a wise thing to be properly uh, armed with this information. However, I honestly don't believe, and I think it's a personal belief, I don't believe that we should all, at any point begin to live in constant fear of the unknown. So it's not that, okay, now I'm going to be afraid of everything, and then I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to shake anybody again. I'm not going to shake anybody again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to talk to you. And you know, the thing, when we've just heard now that, okay, that it's it, it spread by respiratory droplets, 
So you know, you stand around some people and then it's like they're almost going to buff you or pour you some things from the way they talk and the way they... Now that's just on a, on a lighter note. <laughs> on a lighter note. But the point is this. The point is this. We're not supposed to be afraid, but we're supposed to be aware. So we're aware that, okay, this is what, this is what leads to this. And this is what this is what this is how it is caused. And yes, there's a latent form. And yes, there's an active form of the disease. And yes, there's a treatment available. And yes, if I'm exposed to these particular areas, that means my the risk of actually getting infected increases. So yes, and then we also know that okay, there's a vaccine against it that children that are born should. In fact, the the literature or the teaching on that is that on the same day when they are born, they should be given the vaccine. However. The period of okay, for the first 28 days of your life, you can still give them the vaccine. So, we arm ourselves with the knowledge, we are aware, but we're not afraid. So, what it means is okay, we shared some uh, preventive measures. We take those preventive measures and we can also appropriately counsel people around us. So, you see somebody who is coughing, has been coughing for three weeks and says, Okay, sometimes I see blood in, in the from in the sputum and I'm, feel, I'm losing weight, and then I'm this, and I'm that. You can appropriately counsel the person, that, okay, I think you should go to the hospital and get tested. Now, there's no shame in getting tested, because that's the right thing to do. So I think my final word would be, don't be afraid. It should not trigger fear. Rather, this awareness should just make us bolder, because now we're properly aware, and we're, you know, of course, uh, knowledge is power. But in my mind, I want to think applied knowledge is power. So as we apply the knowledge, will become powerful and will become a part of the solution to the public health and uh, public health issues that we face that are unique to our area or our region. All right. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, I'm reminded of the first that was You change the time to I, I didn't help with that. I didn't help with it in 15 minutes, not 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we look into the time. We look into it. <laughs> but, but, but sincerely, it's, it's, it's a very informative one. I really, I really appreciate your time and your efforts. And also, uh, from what I have learned today, I now know that CB is not a death sentence. Okay, the good news is it can be treated. Okay, so uh, we are all encouraged at every point that we should always visit our doctors or physicians in case of any sign or any symptom. Or if you feel you have been exposed, okay, do well to, you know, go to the clinic for proper uh, medical checkup and, if possible, treatment, okay? So thank you very much, Dr. Jaffe. It is a wonderful one with you today, and we wish to see you in our subsequent uh, 30 minutes on ID medical programs, okay? So I am most delighted. So thank you very much once more. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, myself. All right.